Okay, so I'm going to talk about the mist board real quick. Uh, the mist board, as you can see it over here, is a, uh, it's just a little box. It's uh, FPGA based. It's uh, made by, I think the guy's name, I, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, Latherick. I believe is his name. Uh, he's in Poland. Um, he came out and designed this mist board. Um, it uses a regular SD card in front. Uh, I'm using a uh, 32 gigabyte in this particular uh, machine. Uh, it uses VGA out, uh, has USB and a uh, regular funnel jack for the audio. Um, it also has two DB9s for classic uh, Amiga game controllers. Uh, connect there. Uh, this version, which all the later versions have, is it has two MIDI ports on the side and in and out. Um, it's basically wired in as a serial port. So if you're in the Atari ST or if you're in the Amiga mode, it's just wired through as the serial. So it just uh, automatically just assumes that there's something plugged into the serial port that's MIDI based. Um, I have tested this uh, with uh, the Miracle Piano keyboard software uh, that was uh, available, that full-size keyboard that teaches you how to play piano. It does work with that right out of the box um, with the Amiga core. The other things they can do, besides the Amiga, there is other cores available. Uh, of course, Commodore 64 is a popular one, and uh, C C Commodore 16, um, uh, actually I can load them. Let me uh, load up the different ones. Let me go up to the top. Um, there's a lot of arcade cores that have come out. These are the, uh, a lot of these are uh, the classic older games like Frogger and uh, Pac-Man. Um, Burger Time is on here. Uh, and these are the classic ROMs, so they have the classic boot up that has the whole test screen and, and all that. And some of them you have to rotate the monitors because in the arcade, the monitors are physically mounted sideways. Um, so they load like they're supposed to and where it's sideways and you have to physically rotate the monitor. Um, this monitor I can't rotate, but the one next to it over here I can rotate. Uh, so if I load one of those cords, I can rotate the monitor so I can see it. Um, so there's a bunch of these, a bunch of these cores. Uh, Miss Pac-Man is on here. Regular Pac-Man, Moon Patrol. Um, there's a lot of these cores. They're available on uh, GitHub. They have a page or repository where they have all the source code and uh, the compiled cores uh, for the arcade machines as well as for the Amiga and the Commodore 64 and the Atari ST. Strad, a bunch of different, different just Apple II, I think, is also on there. So you need to go back yeah, so here's Amstrad, there's two Apple II machines, Atari 800, uh, BST, BBC Micro, Commodore C16, C64, and of course the Mini MiG, which originally started out as a uh, Amiga 500 core with OCS. This version uh, is capable of doing AGA. Um, the MIST board does have a limitation. It has an 18-bit decoder, not a 24-bit color decoder. So it'll scale the 24-bit color down to 18-bit. Um, so far, it's been pretty accurate at the scaling. I don't really notice the difference. Um, it seems pretty accurate to me in the conversion. I played handmade animations and, and those things, and they, they look fine. Um, look like the regular handmade. Also, game consoles, Atari 2600, uh, Atari 5200, ColecoVision, there's a Sega Genesis core, um, there's also Game Boy, Nintendo, uh, Atari 2600, Sega Master System, there's, there's a, those cores are also available. So it's a good system if you want to try a variety of uh, different computer systems, game consoles, and arcade machines. It's nice to be able to switch and try out the different, uh, different machines. Um, besides the classic ports, you can plug in regular USB game controllers and USB keyboard and mouse. So you can get these widely available. This is a Buffalo controller that's a bit widely available and you can just plug in and use. So right now I have the Amiga cord loaded up. And I have uh, some, some programs I've installed. Um, basically this thing, um, I set up the hard drive is a HDF file, and I use WinUAE to set that all up. So I go in and WinUAE on the PC, I create a HDF file, and I load in everything that I want for a base HD file. Um, 
software and stuff. But I can just create the file and start loading on here directly if I want to. Because um, this thing does read ADFs, the floppy disk format, so I can install software, which I have that set up. Uh, on here, I see under apps, I can go and load different programs. Like I can find uh, Deluxe Paint is on here. Deluxe Music, Deluxe Paint 3, Deluxe Paint 4. Do you have the 3D, 3D construction kit? I probably do. I might. I would assume so. I loaded a bunch of stuff on this. Let me go back to see. Let's take a look. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Just curious. <laughs> I thought I'm, I might. <laughs> I do have a lot of software loaded, but I apparently don't have that software loaded. Um, I also have a lot of games loaded uh, on here, too. Uh, besides the applications, uh, of course, a lot of the. Uh, a lot of stuff on the uh, A lot of games. You know, like that. Uh, I haven't loaded in alphabetical because there's a lot to scroll through. So I did it alphabet alphabetically uh, in different folders. So, uh, so this like favorites or most recently used? Uh, it, the menu doesn't have that. It's something that they could add though. But uh, yeah, at, at the moment it doesn't have the uh, favorites menu. So. But if you do have favorite games that you do like, just put them all in a folder uh, on, on, when you connect it to the PC. Just put it all in there is one way to do it. But later they might add that. We'll see. We'll see. Because it is a open source project. So, um, so on here I have, uh, I, know, I can show you, here's uh, Scala Multimedia. This is, uh, there are new versions of Scala, but I'm using the MM300 even though this will load the 400 and IC500. You know, uh, but this one came with uh, a 4000 tower, so I had to install it, so I just loaded it up. Let me load the script real quick. So this will load Scala, and it runs, it runs really fast. Like, here's the Rave, which is a very fast Scala thing. Uh, this machine, um, Right now it's running, running I'll probably stop the background because I'm driving not too many. Um, I'll go through the menus real quick. Some of the capabilities. Right now it's set to the uh, Motorola 20. You can set this to a 68,000 or a 10 for compatibility if you want to do like an A500. Um, there's also this turbo mode. Uh, I talked to a few people who were asking questions about that. Um, basically that speeds up access between like, I think chip RAM and fast RAM. It takes some limitations off, but some of the games break under that, but under the OS, it seems to run fine. And you get a little bit of a speed up there. Um, you can do NTSC or PAL, of course, and you can change the chipset. There's AGA, OCS 500, or 1000, ECS, and of course, AGA. And then, of course, you can turn on the 3D, uh, C3D control pad emulation if you want to, in case you want the extra buttons that you're running. One of those, one of those games. Um, right now, it's set for two meg chip and 24 megabytes fast. You can add some of the memory in the slow memory area, just like it was on the 500. So it goes up to 1.5 megs, but that will really kill performance if the MIS starts using that RAM. So I usually leave it off because it'll uh, the performance takes a big hit as soon as it uses that. You can change the Kickstart ROMs, like if I want to load. Uh, Different uh, Kickstart ROM, I can go to uh, yeah, Kickstart 1.3 if I want to play software for uh, that run in the Amiga uh, 1.3 mode. Uh, I've turned some features off here since so it's working already. Um, you know, I have to set some of the settings, turn AGA off and all that, so there's some issues. And then it works fine. Um, there's a way to save configuration once it's all set. Um, you save the configuration and you can loaded between the default and the one through four. So I'll go ahead and go back to default and get uh, AGA and version one through three loaded back in. I'll pick up in a second. So I just loaded the configuration. A little bit of the delay. I don't know what, what the delay is. I'll just reset it. That's why I didn't know it. I just hit the wrong button. 
let me go back to the 1200. You can see also the Atari ST. It's also uh, one of the machines he was targeting when he was making the MIS for it. The MIS was supposed to be Amiga and Atari ST. It's kind of a merger between the two names. Oh, that's how I am. So, so I'll get the motor back to We might have to chase you out of here if you're going to be running some Atari ST stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, in terms of the guy who designed it, you know, that, that was his... <laughs> but yeah, the Amiga stuff is better. I, I always like the Amiga stuff better. <laughs> but it's, I've never had an ST, so it's kind of interesting to see how the games ran with the Atari ST. I, I have to say, I still prefer the Amiga version. It sounds better, it looks better. Not to bash the Atari ST. You know. <laughs> Make anybody upset, but I still like the Amiga version. Besides Scala, I loaded um, like Disney Animation Studio, for example. So I can go ahead and open, uh, let me open an animation real quick and show you how it runs. And the volume is here. So if anyone's familiar with Disney Animation Studio, it was um, a program created uh, I think Silent Software by Reichardt von Wolfshield, his company. I also did, I think, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that, that game on the internet, right. so that, you know, that particular game. Um, uh, this program basically teaches you how to do uh, animation business style. Um, they basically digitize this from um, frames off of sheets and then they need to play it back. Um, it also has uh, onion skinning. So you can see the previous frames in the grayscale. Mm. And then it has a lot of the tools for, uh, you know, for drawing and doing text and other things, flood fills and all that. Um, let me load another one, because it can do different resolutions. Let me load a higher resolution. This one Yeah. It'll ask me to change the resolution. Yeah, reconfigure. So here's one that's in, in high resolution. You can see the resolution changed. So here's Allison. Allison one woman from the movie. You can see it in the skin. Um, they also have a uh, an ink and paint, which you can fill in the color. So here's the color palette. So you can move that in and start doing the uh, colorize it. Here. So you can see it animated at full speed and all that. So you can, uh, you can, do, you can do stuff just like you did back in the day in, uh, through this MIS board. Um, the speed is, I think it's around 3,000 or 30, uh, 25 megahertz, I think is its performance. Um, so it's not like the basic 87 megahertz, 8500 speed, it's, it's more of a beefier. Speed so you can run some of these applications at full speed. Like Scala runs great on um, here. We also earlier today loaded in uh, Lightweight. Uh, this doesn't do the floating point, so you have to load the regular non floating point version, but it does run on here. Um, it's nice because we have extra RAM, so, uh, so we, can, we can load some of these things like uh, all those Starfighters again. Because we were loading that earlier this, the, on the other demo video with the Tester, we were loading the same scene on a real machine, on a real Amiga, and now we're loading it on the FPGA. So I'll make a preview of the, 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 the bounding box will be better. That'll take a long time. Busy. Yeah. I'd rather do the make preview and do bounding box. We should see it from the camera. There it is. Bouncing on. There we go. So now it's making the preview of all the motion of the ships flying in. That one, the other machine was an 060, so that's why it landed out. Oh, right, 
don't want to make you guys wait. Uh, so I can go ahead and play what it just did. So it plays back at full speed, which is great. So you can render stuff in Lightwave if you want to. Um, but if you render stuff, you can't save it onto the, onto this, can you? Yeah, you can. You save it in the uh, yeah either under an ADF file oh, as a virtual floppy, or you save it under uh, on the HDF okay. file for the hard drive, which uh, you could do a lot more space. And then when you go into um, put it into a PC under WinUAE, just add that HDF into it as a hard drive, and you'll be able to access it and pull it out uh, onto your computer. Got that one, and you also have this other works too. So, this is all the So, I said it, I didn't demo this earlier. Um, here's some of the software. Like, this is the uh, default software that came with my 4000 tower that I purchased way back in the, the mid 90s. I did slightly. 96, I think, or 96 or 97. Um, so I have the default software from, the, from those days. So here's personal paint. Uh, let's see, this version came with. So you can, you can do with regular paint stuff. Uh, it's pretty snappy. You know, of course, change the resolution of my app. Uh, you know, the So here's a higher resolution. Um, so besides the uh, Amiga, there's also uh, yeah, one of my other favorite machines. Change core, Vita to 64. So now we can load the Commodore 64. So here's the Commodore 64, and I could load in um, disk images, but also uh, programs, tapes, or cartridges. I like to load in uh, PRGs because they're much quicker. So I'm not sure which one's going to be the best. Way. So I'm select. So you can go ahead and uh, boot up a game. I haven't tested all these files. <laughs> so, and then of course you can use the um, you can use the USB controller or you can use the DB9 here uh, if you have a classic controller. You can also switch this thing into PAL, which is really helpful if you want to play a demo or a game that was designed for the PAL region. So you get the proper screen mode and the proper uh, speed for the machine. There's other things you can do in here. You can uh, change the type of SID. You can say you put a 65 mm on stereo SID. In here, you can switch, this. You can switch the different settings. Um, there's an audio filter. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm not sure exactly. I'd have to read the documentation. There's also the different, the different chips for. Uh, Oh, yeah, you can change the model, yeah, in the FPGA. Which is good to have those options, because you might have a piece of software that's pretty pure if you need something specific. Uh, it's also like the type of how many players you have. Uh, apparently you can do four, four player mode. I've not tried it with the game before. I'm not sure what the difference is. You can also swap the joysticks instead of having to yank out the controller to switch it out. To the other port, you can just do it on the menu, which makes things easier. You don't want to be always connecting and reconnecting all the time you wear the port out. So, uh, they did add on the newer version, you can do tape. So you could stream tapes in. And so you have a cassette image. Uh, there's also a C16 on here, which I'm not. Familiar. I'm not as familiar with this machine, so, but, but it does run. I don't have any software for it right now, but it is in here. But. 
Uh, the t how much memory? Uh, 16K, 64K, and of course, change the SID. I'm not sure how accurate the SID is. SID? Yeah. Uh, SID on an app? Yeah. It's 16 plus 4. Yeah. So I'm not as familiar with this thing. Uh, Robert's more familiar with that machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as familiar with that. Because I started with this Commodore 64, so that's the one I'm more familiar with. But it's great if you want to run, if you don't have a physical C64, it's got uh, FPGAs are a good way to go because it's very close to uh, the as opposed to a software emulator, which is kind of uh, inaccurate. Even on a fast machine, it could be, there's little issues. Versus an FPJ, which is closer to the real hard than the yeah, it, it's like you're able to jump around the course really quickly. Yeah, it's no time to get from one to another. Yeah, it, it flashes pretty fast. Um, of course, the files are really small. Then it's compiled out to load them. They're pretty tiny. It's powerful. Powerful. We switch back and forth. Um, I guess I'll, uh, if there's any questions, I guess I'll just put them in the Has anyone fit one of those into like, the regular Commodore case? Someone may have. I would, I would definitely. Probably on YouTube, I'm sure there's some videos of people doing that. Um, yeah, because yeah, I know they have other products that fit into uh, the Commodore 64 instance that, uh, what is it, the Reloaded? Is that what it's called? No, that was the C64 Reloaded, which is yeah. the first size of the board. Yeah, which is basically as an FPGA, which, is, you know, which was designed to fit in the C64. So, I'm not sure if you need But uh, you probably could stick in this board in there if you change the pack of the case a little bit to fit this, because the meter is just a board. Probably rewire some of the controllers on Keyboard would be even yeah, make yeah. a keyboard work on it. <laughs> yeah, you'd probably have to translate it somehow into to USB. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like three something like three seventy nine or something. I think it was around there. It depends on exchange rate. Yeah, it, yeah. Because of the exchange rate. Yeah, the exchange rate. You know, great rate. Uh, this is the newest version. I bought this I think two months ago. So this is the late. The latest one is this black case. I have some older ones that are uh, gray, for example, mm -hmm. just very mm -hmm. It's a slightly different uh, motherboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did have an eBay store, but apparently the fees are kind of high. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so you can order it from his website. You have to just look for you know, the misboard lab. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's called, uh, you can find his name on the GitHub. Like pages, uh, where, the, where the repository of software is located. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. I'm not totally sure. <laughs> I don't. I hate to pronounce it wrong, but I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Any other questions?